So every minor league baseball rebrand usually has a contest. And there is a winner at the end of the contest. A name the team contest. A name the team contest. And, the, and there's always a second place. The name that didn't make the cut. So a couple of years ago, we were collaborating with the team in Bowling Green and had this idea. What if for one night only, uh, the second place name became the identity for the team? And in Bowling Green, they have the like largest underground cave system in North America. Inside the cave, there's this blind prehistoric cave shrimp. And we thought, what if for one night only, we were the blind cave shrimp? And so this was a cap that we created. It was the very first what could have been night. And it is a blind prehistoric cave shrimp. And it set off a new wave of promotional nights in minor league baseball. And it started off with what could have been night. What could have been night was, for one night only, we are going to be whatever team name came in second place in our name the team contest. And it became so popular that every year they were doing blind cave shrimp nights. And they stock this in the team store full time. It is a, a, a huge seller. And that sort of ushered in, how do, are there other ways that we could celebrate our hometowns. You know, there are foods that are unique to our hometowns. And so like in like uh, Staten Island, you know, Staten Island in New York City, it's like the pizza capital of the world. We thought like, well, is there a way that we could celebrate pizza? And so, you know, like if you're like, you know, go to the gym a lot, you're a gym rat. And so this is um, the pizza rats, which was an idea that we came up with for the Staten Island Yankees. And uh, here's the uh, subway token with the uh, NYC and the Y is the bite taken out of it. And people went crazy in New York for the pizza rats hat. And so we were trying to, you know, we're about experience. And so we had this idea like, what if we actually deliver the pizza rats hats in custom pizza rats boxes? So we created this and when you order a cap, not only does it get shipped in a pizza box, but the, like each order comes with, uh, Parmesan cheese and crushed red pepper. And so this ushered, you know, all kinds of, you know, Reading was like, we're the whoopie pie capital of the world. So we're gonna be the whoopies or in uh, Connecticut, they're the lobster rolls or in um, Rochester, the garbage plates, um, which is like hash browns, burger, cheese, mustard, onions. You forget a few things, Karen. Okay, yes, it's a lot in a garbage plate. Um, but these teams started uh, adopting these food identities. So like in Lehigh Valley, you were the cheesesteaks. And as the cheesesteaks in Lehigh Valley, you could either get your hat with onions or without onions. And Copa started off, uh, I think in Corpus Christi, which was, let's celebrate our Latin American heritage. You know, there's so much baseball history in Latin America, and it's such a part of Latin American culture, and how do we expand our audience and celebrate all the things that we love about Latin American and Latin culture, and so, uh, we, they st Minor League Baseball is this great initiative uh, called the COPA program, and it is a program where each minor league baseball team celebrates a different part of Latin culture. A lot of it's hyper local, and like, you know, one of my favorites is uh, the Vineros, which is up in the Tri Cities in Washington. They have a ton of wineries, and they have a lot of like grape growing, and to celebrate uh, the hard working uh, Vineros who are a part of the culture in the Tri-Cities, they have the Vineros for their night. So there's a lot of fun ways that they're celebrating, you know, local Latin culture and it's, it's awesome. I think the big thing is about any, creating any sort of beloved brand, logo, merchandise, whatever, is authenticity of story. And so we really, when it comes to Copa especially, we really make sure that we do our research, that we interact with the local Latin community there, that they're involved deeply in the creative process, and that the, what the story we're telling is authentic. We also make sure that our designers that we even have working on the project are of Latin descent. We, we really want to infuse as much authenticity into the process as possible so that um, because the more authenticity, the, the harder it resonates. And the other thing too is, is that uh, you still want it to feel like minor league baseball. And I think if you look at some of the, so, the successful Copa brands, is you know if you were to say like, well, what is like a um, what is like a, 
a sports name, you would say like the Bravos, the Braves, or like the, the, the Osos, the Bears. Like these are like, you know, mighty names. And when you hear the name Chanclas, which is a story of like when you're young and you say something smart and your grandmother takes off her sandal and like throws it across the room at you. Like that's not a sports name, you know? Like you would, you, you just wouldn't think of that. It just, it just it's, not, it's not a mighty name like the Bears and the Tigers. Um, it, is, it is a minor league baseball name. And so even in all the authenticity of the storytelling and the authenticity of bringing in the Latin community and bringing, um, even from a designer standpoint, how we're having designers um, put their hand in it to make it authentic, we're still working to make sure that it feels minor league baseball, that it has, that the stories are sort of fun, tongue-in-cheek Latin minor league baseball stories, and they're, they're not sort of uh, the serious stories that you would expect from a tradition. I mean, ultimately, it all has to come back to fun, That's minor league fun. So, I mean, we could tell an authentic story of, you know, how many people died at the you know, whatever fort in San Antonio, which is true and authentic, but you know, it's not fun. Yeah. But buying chanclas, buying chanclas are fun. <laughs>